joy in God's will. And there are several reasons why I want to talk about joy in God's will because, one, we certainly should have joy in His will. And two, is because we don't always have joy. And three, joy isn't always lasting. And four, is that the joy we're talking about sometimes can be our version of joy. And not Jesus' version and understanding of joy, and our joy can be very short-term and not long-lasting. So, why is it important? Well, because of what Jesus said in his prayer. In his prayer, that when he was asked, you know, how should I pray? The disciples were wanting to know what to pray. In, jo- in Matthew chapter 6, we get this example. And and this is verse 10, which we want to focus. Where Jesus is saying in the prayer, Your kingdom come. Now, when we think about kingdom, we're thinking about God's kingdom coming. And that can vary with us from time to time, depending on how our present kingdom is going. If our kingdom is kind of going, our own personal little kingdoms, uh, going kind of well, we're, we're not as anxious for God's kingdom to come. And we think about God's kingdom, it it isn't Jesus' kingdom, it is your kingdom, the Father's kingdom to come. And then he makes this point. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So there is a there is a transformation that Jesus is praying about and we're praying about that the will of God it's, it's telling us here that in heaven, His will is done. And that there is a transformation in our life that our will should be transformed into God's will and God's heavenly will. And doing that on earth, doing a heavenly thing on earth while we're still here on earth. Now, th- there are several problems that we encounter with God's will. One, oftentimes we question and we wonder what God's will is. So that's a little bit of a problem. I hear that all the time. And I think probably all of us on a daily basis kind of say, well, Lord, what's what's your will? And in particular, what's your will for me today? What would you have me to do and how would you have me to do it? That's, That's part of the problem with that. The other one is that we don't always agree with God's will, and we think that if our will would be a little different. And in God's will, also another thing that tends to be a little difficult for us is how quickly it is going to happen. Because oftentimes we want our will to happen now. Exactly. So there is a contrast and there is a difficulty. There is a tension in this. Therefore, I had Diamond read from the words of the Apostle Paul that he wrote to the church at Rome. And it's important that it's to the church of Rome because when we think about the church of Rome, we think about it as a very cosmopolitan city, a world in which Caesar ruled, uh, the Christians were being persecuted, they had their problems and difficulties. But here's what Paul urges them. Romans, again, reading this. Therefore, I urge you, brothers, brethren, in the view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices. Now, this is not encouraging right on the surface. To offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. So it isn't a matter of just offering your body as a living sacrifice, but something that is holy, is pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. So when we think about worship, oftentimes we tend to think worship in terms of singing songs, praising God, blessing God, and enjoying, enjoying all the blessings. 
in a life of kind of the health and wealth gospel, we can tend to think that way. But he says to them, Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be you transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and to prove what God's will is. So, this is the part of the di- dynamic that we find, is we often don't know from day to day, and sometimes from hour to hour, how God's will is going to act and what we should do. Nor do we enjoy it and or appreciate it. But he goes on to say what God's will is. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. So we find Paul here, even in the talking about the acts of a living sacrifice, that God's will is good, pleasing, and perfect. So the question to us then is, do we see it that way as good, pleasing, and perfect? And is Paul the only one who sees it that way? So our question today is about finding joy in God's will. Joy even when uh, times or situations may be difficult. Because I have encountered, and I believe probably many of you, joy robbers in our life. Even when we know that something has transpired in such a way that it's kind of like, it puts a smile on God's face, so to speak, because this is a good thing that he is doing. Again, I want to come back to some of the problems with that. We feel more that way when what we are doing is something magnificent, something glorious, something like a huge sacrifice on our part, and we're doing this to the glory of God. What about the little things that come along in in the course of a day, in the course of our lifetime? Because I'm going to suggest there are many little things that come along that God has put into our lives that bring us joy. Things that he gives us to do. And and again, I'll reflect back upon the sermon, upon the scripture in, in Ephesians 2, verse 10, that God has prepared good works in advance for us to do. So we find, I have found, that there are dots that are sabotaging joyful events. Now he had some little thing, and I was thinking about this particular sermon, but some little thing that crossed my path this past week. This past week, my daughter turned another year older. I'm not going to tell you how old, because it kind of dates me as well. But another year older, and I had texted her and said, well, how about we get together for coffee? You know, and so she texted me back, on, and I gave her a, a date and all that, and she said, well, I can't do that. On the, I'm, I'm busy on that particular day at that particular time. However, I could do it on this date or that date, and then she followed up with the fact that, oh, we're going to dinner on Thursday evening, and would you like to come along? Well, I thought about going to dinner with her as well, but it's one of those things that makes you smile. She says, we're going to the best fried chicken place in all of Sacramento. Would you like to go? Well, you know, one, I'm a pastor, and preachers love chicken. I spent a lot of the years in the South, and I love chicken. I grew up, and it's like, would I like to go? You know, I'm, I'm there. I'm there for you. And then it was like, I was thinking, well, you know, what I want to do is I, I wanted to treat her anyway, so I'll text her back and say, it's my treat. Yes, I would like to go. It's my treat. So in my little walk, and then I'm thinking about all this, I'm thinking, well, i got other this to do and that to do. And it was robbing me of my joy in the moment. And I'm thinking, the devil is always about doing things to keep me from enjoying something because she had no idea, and no idea that I had been craving chicken. I, had been, I haven't had any because me and fried chicken are like potato chips. I can't eat just a little. 
Uh, George, it, too bad George isn't here today because he would be able to appreciate. I absolutely love fried chicken and the like, but I, I hardly know when to stop when I get started. Feeling the blues today, or tired of life already? Do you have questions about life, or need spiritual advice? The Worldwide Church of God is located in Fairfield, Santa Rosa, and Modesto, California. We welcome everyone to attend our worship services with us every week at the times listed on your screen.